meeting for the redetermination of benefits on County Ditch 42. Uh, some introductions. Uh, my name is John Thompson. I'm one of the viewers. The other viewers are Bob Hansen and Mark Behrens. Um, some staff from Redwood County are here. Scott Wold, uh, uh, Matt Mummy, and uh, Brent Lang. Back in the back there. Um, Thank you, okay. Commissioner. Sorry, I didn't see you back there. Okay, uh, it's probably <laughs> I won't matter. <laughs> uh, this is the County Ditch 52 watershed uh, in front of you on the screen right now. Uh, the red line on the outside is the watershed line. Uh, this is showing actually a watershed. This is a, a lateral that's not part of the system. It's a, a, a part of, of its own. It outlets right there in the, the upper portions are down here. Uh, County Ditch 52 was established in 1919 and replaced what was then known as County Ditch 4. County Ditch 52 was constructed, it was actually constructed between 23 and 1924. Uh, it consists of about 8,396 acres of farmland and building sites. 794 acres uh, are in the city of Redwood Falls and there's 199.1 acres of uh, city, state, township uh, roads, uh, county roads. Uh, so our, the total is about 9,294 acres. Uh, it has not been redetermined uh, since it was established in 1919. So for the last uh, 100 years or so, really only about 3,700 acres has been paid uh, uh, to maintain the ditch of the uh, 9,290 acres that are in the watershed. And so that's one of the reasons that ditches are redetermined is to bring uh, the benefits up to today's value and, and with today's drainage technology, uh, basically we consider everything within that yellow area as the watershed that should be paying some, some benefits uh, to help take care of the system. Um, consists both of county open ditch and county tile, about 8.6 miles of open ditch and about uh, 30.7 miles of, of county tile, varying from different sizes, from six inches up to 36. The established outlet, as I pointed out, was into Crow Creek in the southeast corner of Section 4 of Paxton Township. As we said, we, we update the benefits and damages for parcels within the watershed. Uh, every parcel is going to have those benefits, which is a percent of the total amount, and the percent is what uh, that parcel will pay in the future for repairs and, and costs. This is the second of three meetings. Uh, we explain what we're doing, how the process works, and why the drainage authority is doing the redetermination. And we, we want to learn anything from you about your parcel that might be unique or something we should know about that maybe can adjust the benefits uh, up or down for you. Uh, basically, drainage tile, the way it's installed, the technology has changed a lot in 1912. Hand shovels, as we progress through the years, I don't think uh, our forefathers would have understood what the drainage is now and the capabilities of it. These are the viewers that worked on the system. Uh, we have some farmers. Um, I was an auditor treasurer down in Faribault County for a long time. These are the various counties we work in. And a lot of these counties are going through a methodical uh, process of getting all their ditches uh, up to today's values and their benefits current. And Redwood County is doing that with, with all of its ditches. I won't read through all this, but we are credited. Um, you could have got this when you walked in. We won't spend too a lot of time, but we do take an oath. We look at, uh, we come and look at the ditch. We view it. We uh, take some pictures of it. Occasionally, if need be, we'll ride that system with a four-wheeler. Uh, we use online GS parcel site that uh, Redwood County uses. We're, we get soil types from the USDA. Google Earth has a lot of great pictures on there for several years back to the early 2000s or 1990s. Um, use yield averages taken from the National Agricultural Stats Service, production costs from the U of M FinBin, sales data from the assessor's office, uh, a visual inspection of those 40 acres or less, and we consult with the county auditor and the ditch department. This is a, a made up system, but uh, what we'll talk about is, oops, sorry.
Once again, the watershed is all within the yellow. The solid dark line is an open ditch. And the dotted red lines are county or system tile that are part of the system, not private, but the part of, actual part of the system. We look at basically these five things when we're going to determine the benefits on a parcel. We look at the uh, number of acres in the watershed. We look at the soil types, the location rate, how far is your parcel from, from the main open ditch or a county tile. Uh, we look at the tile benefit. There's an advantage to have that tile through there most of the time. And we look at the efficiency of the system as a whole. So, and, and then we'll discuss each of those a little bit further. And we have about a, a 30 to 40 minute uh, presentation. Percent of the total benefits is what we arrive at. County manages these systems and, and oversees the repairs. And we'll talk about the damages or the grass strip right away that uh, uh, is required. As we said, uh, every parcel within that watershed helps pay. So if there's a, I don't know if you can see this real good, but if there's a uh, slough in a bank, the whole system pays to repair that. Same thing goes with a, uh, any kind of a tile outlet or a washout on, on the public system. Once again, these are those five things that we take into consideration when determining benefits. Every parcel that we look at is broken down into a, a minimum of 40 acres. If you own a quarter, you're going to have four lines on your spreadsheet. The, uh, the red line, once again, is the outside of the watershed. This particular parcel here is 40 acres. It's a paved road on the bottom half, so probably about uh, 1.5 acres is taken off for the road. That's the, the uh, responsibility of the road authority. So it leaves 30 and a half acres as benefited. Um, on this parcel, there's some outside the watershed, eight acres out, 32 are in, that same road taken off, so you end up with the benefits of 30.5 for that 40. We also take out, uh, if there's an open ditch through your parcel, we take out those, uh, those acres that the ditch comprised of. Those were paid for back when the ditch was constructed, uh, and they're uh, definitely not a productive part of, the, of, the, of your farm. Other systems are around County Ditch 52, uh, 44, 63, JD51, 64 down here, 22, and then uh, LAT 87 of, of uh, County Ditch 52, and then County Ditch 48 is a small area up in there. If they are current in redeterminations on those systems, we match those acres so that if you have a 40 and you're in two different watersheds, you shouldn't be assessed for 43 acres or, or whatever. You'll be, we try to match that. So, uh, the, equals, the acres add up to your 40 acres. If it's an older determination, we'll, that'll be taken care of when, when that's finally redetermined. Acres are tiled out. If you have acres that uh, you are on your parcel, but you've tiled them to a different system for whatever reason, it just might work out better for you. The lay of the land works that way. Uh, in this instance, this water is going this way. And this is the watershed we'd be talking, or the open ditch that we're talking about. Um, for whatever reason, I said you decided to take your water that way. We'll start out by reducing those benefits by 50%, figuring that 50% is going through the underground tile and 50% is going overland uh, to the system that's in that your the watershed is. Uh, we can change those depending upon the situation, and, and uh, we'll, we can look at that if you ask us. Same works with tiled in acres. You've got that outside, uh, acres outside the watershed, you're tiling them in. Uh, it's only fair that you help pay for that and we'll start at 50% on this system and, and taking the water that way and 50% remains where it is, if it's a public system. Here's an example down in Faribault County. Uh, the green line is the watershed line. Um, this farmer decided to take these acres and tile them down to JD 13. They were in County 44. So we adjusted his uh, benefits by 50% for these acres that are tiled down. 50% of that water is probably still making its way up to the open ditch of 44. And, and uh, uh, they're not over assessed, but they're really kind of 
paying the right amount to the right system. There is a little bite in, in, uh, county, or in the state drainage law. Uh, a county could, uh, if you're draining into that and, and don't have permission to do it uh, and aren't paying benefits, they could go out and cut your tile. We don't know of too often that that's ever happened. Usually people work things out and get that taken care of. Now is a good time in the redetermination to bring those tiled in acres and uh, get everything above board. Once this is, if the board approves those, uh, this redetermination, um, you really have, would have to go through a legal process which uh, involves an attorney and a, getting a petition to get that permission. Just a little more on that one. Any parcel that has the benefits in a county system has the right to use it. We also look at location as one of those five factors. We start here, if you're right next to the open ditch, we start giving it a 100% factor. If you're 140 away, we go to 90%. So for every 40 away from that open ditch, we drop it by 10%. This is 70% because there's a road that runs up and down there and it, it costs, it's gonna cost you money to get the water. You're gonna have to bore it or cut it one way or another. So it's a, just another impediment to the drainage of getting the water there. So we'll drop that to 70%. Tile uh, location, so if you have an uh, open ditch running through your, your parcel, or, or I should say a, a tile, we start at 90%, the, co the drainage coefficient just isn't as high as an open ditch is, so we start at 90 and then back it away 10% every 40 year away from that. Normally it's a benefit to have that county tile. We'll explain here in a minute if it, if it isn't. We also look at the efficiency of a system uh, we also take that into account. How, what is the overall efficiency of the tile line of the open ditch? And we'll make adjustments for that. Soil definitions are a big part of it. Um, we grade those soils A, B, C, and D. A is, is we try to look at that system, what it was before drainage was put in. So A would have been frequently flooded, cattails, uh, just some muck uh, ground. B soil was occasionally flooded. You probably got some pasture grass out of that maybe years ago. Uh, zero, two percent slope. Three, this is kind of the side hills, a higher slope to it. And then D is upland areas with six percent or more slope that uh, years ago weren't tiled. Nowadays you see more of that being tiled. There's one with all four different uh, grades of soil on there. A soil before the drainage, there's your cattails, water sanding. Uh, after the drainage, you've got some good, uh, the really good productive ground. B soil, pasture grass, uh, slough, hay. Uh, after drainage, you're gonna, once again, have uh, crops. C, you've got uh, side hills. Uh, and D, some steeper grounds and upground, gro upground uh, land. Didn't used to see that ever tiled. Now you'll see a, a, a guy farming up or, or tiling up a ravine. Or, or There's a picture of some D ground being tiled. I wouldn't have, ah, never mind. <laughs> Too much rain. Everybody who grew up on a farm knows that you were told, get as close to that wet hole as you can, but don't get stuck, right? <laughs> Sometimes it didn't work. We also will adjust your benefits based if you have any permanent wetlands, RIM, WRP, uh, CREP, uh, as long as it's a permanent uh, ground. We probably have that information, but if you know you have some, uh, double check with us, make sure we've got it. Uh, the less than permanent, we don't make adjustments for that. It had to be cropland. Uh, farmable wetlands, we don't know what farmable wetlands you have or not. They was, uh, NRCS doesn't give that out. Uh, so if you have some farmable wetland, let us know. We'll make an adjustment for that. CRP acres, as we said, aren't, aren't not reduced. Uh, you might have that pothole that uh, never has been farmed. Non-benefited acres, uh, roads, they pay, uh, the road authority pays for roads. Building sites, we do give an advantage to, or a benefit to. And then trees, we don't give any value. So if you have a grove of trees or anything, we'll reduce that to, to zero for those acres. 
That's the farm of Wetland. That pothole out in the back 40. We may have got that. We probably did when we looked at some maps. Um, but uh, once again, we might have three, four, five acres out back that you've never been farmed, never will be. Here's a uh, picture of some non-benefited acres. Road benefits, Mark tells the story of coming over to Blue Earth um, for a hearing and uh, MnDOT was plowing down the side bank of the road uh, and then taking that tile right into a county tile. So they definitely use that system also. Inch of water in the basement's probably a bigger deal than an inch of water in year 40. Um, Mark lives on the top of a hill. He tiles around his house. His water actually goes in two different directions. So uh, farmsteads uh, and do benefit from drainage. We said county tile is, is usually a benefit to you, but you might have a situation where, uh, like right in here, where you've got a couple different tiles coming into it, and you get a boil up there and it floods on a pretty consistent basis. You let us know about that. We'll, we can go back and check some of the maps on uh, Google Earth that go back several years and um, we'll make an adjustment for that and lower your benefits. Definitely not that big of an advantage if you're getting flooded out every other year. This 40 here has 1,400 feet of tile across it. We st uh, give a 50 cent We give a 50 cent uh, benefit for that, for that 1,400 feet. None of you don't have a tile running through it. Same thing if that open ditch runs through your property. Sometimes that's a, a great advantage. However, if it gets overloaded and on a consistent basis, once again, you'd lose acres because it flows over the banks and sits in a pothole and costs you crop. We'll make that adjustment for you also. So we do a, a page on every parcel that we have in, in County Ditch 52. And we'll start out with a number of acres. This happens to be a 40 acre plot. Um, we take that acre out, it's probably a gravel road down here, so it's an acre. So you have 39 benefited acres. And then we have the soil types. Each one of those soil types, A, B, C, and D, or excuse me, we take out the trees, 1.6 acres of trees there, about 1.1 acres of uh, building site. Uh, building site has a, a different multiplication factor than the other soils. A, B, C, and D, A gets the most advantage, so they have a higher multiplier. Going down to D, which is on the uphill, not as big of an advantage, so that has a lower multiplier. We uh, capitalize that over 25 years and you get a number of $54,101. Sounds like a big number, but that number is just used in the percentage of the total. Uh, you won't be charged that much. We're 80% away from the open ditch, which means probably two 240s or a road and a 40, and we take that number times 80%, $43,281 would be your benefits on that 40. This one happens to have a, a county tile running through it. So we come down to this, we give it a 90% rate because of the tile running through there. Benefits $48,700 is the 1,400 times that, so we have a benefit of 49391 We don't try to make any numbers up when we're doing this, so we use a three-year county average corn yield, average bean yields, uh, county acre, uh, average CER rating, township CER, uh, three-year average sale of, of price for corn and beans, and the in input costs we get from uh, the FinBin from the University of Minnesota. We also have uh, a couple farmers on our crew, and uh, they take a look at those numbers and make sure we're close on that. The grass easement we talked about, um, 16 and a half foot grass strip. Uh, we pay it at 100% of it's through crop ground, 50% of it's pasture, 25% uh, 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 in there. Let's see. As we said before, the open ditch here was paid for back when the ditch was constructed. This is the same 16 and a half feet that Dayton law passed a few years ago, uh, which required you to put a grass strip in. You didn't get paid for that. But we're talking about a, a grass strip under the redetermination uh, drainage statute, which in 1977 said if a, a system is redetermined, the, the system should uh, buy a 16 and a half foot uh, buffer on both sides, and that should be planted to grass, uh, and the system would uh, pay for that. 
This would have been before, uh, before redetermination and before Dayton's law was put into effect. So you can see there's no buffer on that. Here we have the 100% over on this side. This is not actually cropped, so it's at uh, 10%. It's uh, just outside the road right away, but uh, definitely not cropped. Same situation there, except this is actually in the road right away. This is actually a county ditch uh, public system. Um, we have to put that in, but at 10%. This uh, paid 50% on the past year, 100% on this side. There's a fence here. They had to move that back 16 and a half feet. The county needs that 16 and a half feet to do their maintenance. Once again, there's a grass strip easement through an acreage is at 10%. Probably not ever going to use that one. They're going to take the spoils from this side of the ditch. But we are required to pay for that. Parcels uh, along the open ditch in town be paid at $100 per parcel for that easement. So again, it's highly unlikely that uh, uh, they'll use that, but they may need to clean that ditch out for whatever purposes. Some of you may have a CRP contract on that uh, ditch buffer. Uh, you're going to have to check with your uh, county offices to see how they're going to play that. Some counties do it differently than others. Uh, if you want to renew that, some will make you move the 16 and a half foot and then the 33 and a half. Some will let that be, stand combined. Picture, I think it was in Wiseka County where uh, it had to put a buffer on, on this side and he had to move that fence back. He wasn't very happy about it, but he did it. He got paid for that ground. You can bail it. It's your ground yet. Um, it's a misconception that everybody can use that property for, for hunting. It's your property. You would have to give them permission to do that. Uh, in the statute, the uh, several different people that can be out on that grass strip, the engineer and engineer's assistants, the viewers, we probably won't need more. We're, we're pretty much done with all of our, our job. Uh, viewers assistants, don't have any. <laughs> Those guys that need permission. You're not allowed to make a road on it, so uh, you can drive on it as long as you don't have a, a road. This is obviously a pretty well-packed road. You're probably going to get a letter from the county saying we need to, to restore that to a grass situation, and uh, you can do that at your cost, or you know, push comes to shove, the county can do it, and then you'll have to pay what, what they charge. So in the end, you get a spreadsheet, and this is where everything comes together. So for every 40 acre parcel, you're going to have a, one line on that. So it's the deeded acres. It'll have the name over here, of course, and, and then the, the benefited acres, 37. It's a total of 9,294 acres. Add all those other factors together, we came up with $32,819 in benefits on this parcel. Total of 10,435,000. This 3, uh, 0 0.3016% of all the parcels add up to 100%, in the case this is uh, this amount divided by that. And that's the percentage of the future for the, any maintenance, repair, that sort of thing that uh, you'll be responsible to pay for that, the upkeep of County 52. In this instance, uh, they had one acre of uh, grass strip, and that is being paid out at uh, $6,915. Total of $161,880 in grass strips. At the 25% rate, there's one acre. At 25%, uh, $5,100. Uh, at a 10%, one acre, 2.56 total. So the easement damage is $692. So you would get uh, total damages of $9,336. Your estimated easement assessment will come up to $543. The uh, 9,336 will come to you from the county as a check. That's right, isn't it, Scott? You pay out. Correct. So when this, if this is approved, appeal period ends 
uh, at some point in time, the county will uh, send you a check for $9,336. You also get a bill from them for the estimated easement assessment, $180,000. Do you have anything to add to that, Scott, on when that might happen? And Thank you. So we, we do try to always time it so that you get your check for whatever your damages are um, within that 60 day window. So you have that money to help make that payment as well. Okay. <clears throat> Any assessment that are paid into a dish account stay in that account to, to be used for maintenance purposes. Uh, they can't be used anywhere else in the county. One exception. When one county ditch flows through another county ditch, there may be outlet benefits. Uh, in this case, County 52, Lat 87 runs into 52. So they will pay 3.4% of, of all the bills paid by County Ditch 52. Same thing goes with County 44 and County Ditch 48. So 4.1% of all those costs will be paid by a different system as their right to use your system as an outlet. And those are those systems that will uh, help pay for that. These are just some pictures of the County 52 area. You guys know it better than we do. But uh, That wasn't County 52. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, well, I don't <laughs> Mark farmed with red. <laughs> There's a lot of green in this room. <laughs> I grew up with green. So this happens to be a picture of Freeborn County, and they use a uh, four-wheeler with an arm 16 and a half foot wide, and you can see it's taking up a, a few rows of corn there. You'll probably get a letter from the county saying uh, you've got to remove two or three acres of, or two or three rows of corn. Uh, if you don't do it, we'll have to do it for you and bill you back. So that will maintain that uh, 16 and a half foot buffer. So as you said, this is a, the second of three meetings. The third one is really the only one that, that is required, and that will be in front of the uh, drainage authority, which is the county board. And at that uh, time, they'll have three options to approve it, to table it, or to dismiss it. Um, if it's approved, there's a 30-day appeal period, and within that 30 days, everyone has a right to appeal it for whatever reason you may think that we're wrong or whatever, for whatever reason. Uh, first thing you need to do is probably go see a lawyer, an attorney to do this. It's a legal process. Um, but once done, it's probably going to stand for 30 or 40 years as the, your share of that system. Any questions from anybody? Very clear. What the payment here, and I probably missed that, 
Um, let me go back. Yeah, <laughs> it's a long ways. To that spreadsheet example. The uh, grass strip totals about 168,000. So most of this assessment is to pay the landowners have that need to be paid for that grass strip. Um, we, we said a uh, uh, so 168,000. 180 thousand dollars is in there. Some for viewer costs, some for uh, various county costs, and maybe a little buffer. We just, we don't know what's in that system, so we couldn't tell you if they're more in the hole than that, you'll be, have a little higher assessment. If you're less than that, maybe a little lower assessment. Did, Scott, do you have any numbers on that? Yeah, you gotta give me a OK. I thought you were standing up to speak there, so. <laughs> yes? Do you have any uh, record on when the last time it was cleaned? I, I don't. When, when was the la system last cleaned, major cleaning? Each system is kind of different in how much it can handle erosion and silt and that kind of thing. So um, if you have issues and questions on that, uh, you can talk to Brent or Scott and, and get that taken care of. They can answer it. Yeah? The estimated easement that is, like for the bill, you think on uh, estimated easement, is that something that will be collected every year? It's a one-time assessment. Um, I believe Scott had said earlier at, at another meeting that uh, uh, it, you'd be billed for it, and maybe you could spread that over three or four years, or it's, it's whatever the county board decides on that. But this has nothing to do with cleaning. Today. No, right. it does not. Then that would be a different assessment afterwards. Yeah. Right. So what we normally do, sorry, I'm moving up here now, um, and this is up to the drainage authority, which in this case is the county board. They set these terms. What's traditional is that when you get your bill, so let's say you get that mid-April, right? So say in there, hey, you got 60 days, you can pay this in full choose not to, um, and this is up to the board to set, but traditionally what we say is you can put it on your taxes, um, and that's at 4% interest for normally it's either three or four years, I can't remember that. Um, so then that would be divided up to your property taxes over that time, and you're paying 4% interest. 4% um, is what we generally do, but once again, they set those terms for each of these ditches when we finish them up. So this, what you're looking at today, this is a one-time fee that you, you'll get a direct bill for, it will not be on your taxes, you can choose to pay it or put it on your taxes. Moving forward, we're gonna use these new percentages, that number on the spreadsheet, that's your percentage. That's gonna dictate for when we, if we do a clean out, it costs $100,000, okay? And we're like, hey, we're gonna clean it out next year, we gotta put a levy on it. We're gonna figure out that levy percent, okay? That's gonna show up on your taxes the following year, and your contribution to that is gonna be based off the percentage that's on your spreadsheet. Could you give me an example? Besides, well, on one here, I've got, uh, because it's right on the ditch, it's four, almost 42%. So if you have a $100,000 clean out, what, what would my point four two percent something like that, total? If it was a $100,000 clean out and it was point four two percent Yes. Uh, 420 bucks. Right. That's An easy yep. way to look at that percentage is, is you go, what does this mean? That's point <laughs> four two percent if they did a $10,000 repair on that system now or next year, you move that decimal point two places to the right, and that's your dollar amount of that $10. So you'd owe $42 and X cents on a $10,000 repair. This one here, that $168,000 there at the bottom, that's yep. for all the grass strip. Yep. There's $5,900 worth of easements in town for those parcels that are in town or along the open ditch in the city limits. So there's 174,000 of easement costs going out to landowners. 
and then we we have to by law throw a number at it. We just used 180,000. That covers the easement costs, some viewer costs, some engineering, maybe some admin. But that 180,000 is for this redetermination of benefits. After this, it's just hand to mouth. And as they do maintenance on that system, it'll be whatever the cost of that maintenance is times your percentage. That'll show up on your tax statement. Right. Special assessment to come and get 50. So you were talking about uh, um, if the water was standing, and I got a, I, I farmed some ground that used to farm it, that uh, the top county tile goes through it, but uh, here back in 2018-19, uh, half the farm was underwater. Uh, does that have anything to do with any of the easements or anything that we're dealing with today? 18 and 19 were some yeah. of your storm events. Yeah, well, I got sat through both of them, yeah. <laughs> I, I believe yep, so they were good, terrible. And you yeah. didn't have to check the tile. You could see the water coming up from the road. Yep. Yeah. So that's the county tile. That, that's what I'm getting at. Does that have any bearing on the percentages here that I get billed for, even if that's county tile, that doesn't do me any, any good? We can't design payments based on a thousand year storm. Those were, those were exceptional years. I mean, they're both FEMA disaster years. We've got $10 million in FEMA funding to do drainage repairs from those two years. Um, you know, we haven't had rains like that uh, since whenever. You know, it's, it's not common. So the fact that we had a huge, huge, huge flood should not impact your benefits for the next 100 years because that is abnormal. Now we've had four of them. 91, 96, 2018, 2019. I haven't lived 400 years yet, but I've been through. Anyhow, I, I just want to see if it made any difference on some of the stuff. If I, because a couple, I can show you a picture, but it probably doesn't. It isn't for here. And then, if you're in and you're out every other year, you drown out two acres yeah. right on top of the county tile. Let us know; we can adjust numbers then. But if you get a 10-inch rain, you're underwater. Everybody's underwater. We, we don't adjust numbers for yeah, when everybody's water place. flows into your area. Okay. This, this, most tile systems in the county were designed for either a quarter or three sixteenths inch coefficient, right? So that means that it's going to handle a quarter inch of rain in 24 hours. It does better than that, but that's what it's designed for. So we maintain and you pay to maintain a system that's going to drain by design a quarter inch for over 24 hours. Okay? And we get 11 inches of rain. That's 44 days that that water, technically by design, is going to take to go through that system. It works better than that, but that's what we're maintaining. So, and just to touch, because I look, County Ditch 52 currently has like $630 in its bank account. Okay, so this complete assessment, there's no balance in 52 that's going to offset that. It's going to be handled one time by the silly, and that is by design. So we intentionally keep ditch balances as low as we possibly can um, because that money stays with the ditch. So there's some counties, there's some other people out there different school of thought that you should kind of <coughs> levy a little bit every year so it's a very small hit over the course of 20 years to build that account up. Well now we took your money and you choose to sell the farm, you don't get that money back, that goes, stays with the ditch. So we keep our balances low. Uh, every fall we look at it, when the accounts go in the red. So just because there's a low balance doesn't mean if there's not a, if your tile is broken, Brent and Matt, they're gonna go out there, they're gonna get that repaired. That ditch 52 might go in the negative, okay? So that goes in the negative and we come fall, we look and we say, how much do we need to levy to get this ditch back into the black? If we know there's, if we're gonna have a clean out coming up, that's gonna cost 100 grand. Well in that case, well it doesn't need to be cleaned out next year, maybe not the year after, but maybe four years from now. Well then we will levy percent this year, two percent next year to try to build that up over that three, four year period so you don't get one big levy and come in and say, why did Lynn yell at me? You know? So we try to space that out as much as we can. But we try to keep those balances low. And is there a clean out projected for 52? Brent? That would be a, a, a repair, and the landowners can petition for a, a repair, um, and the board would hear that. If I mean, I 
defer greatly to Brent's experience. He's been doing this for a long time. Um, and if it doesn't need to be cleaned up quite yet, and you get a few more years, I, I trust his judgment. If you disagree with that, there is a process that you can petition the drainage authority and say, nope, we need this repaired. And then there'll be a hearing about that and you can kind of make your case. Yep. Uh, has Redwood County, if we got all the FEMA money from uh, the like 18, 19, uh, didn't uh, Redwood uh, apply for uh, federal assistance on some of the damage? We costs? applied for assistance in 2018 and 2019. There's two different FEMA events. The way FEMA works, they say here's a disaster, is anything that happened from this date to this date and caused certain effects, right? So they have two different declarations, one in 18, one in 19. The one in 18, um, would have been about mid-19, they came back and said, we're going to award you $100,000. Well, we had $2 million in repairs, and so we disagree with your assessment. So we've been going through an appeal process with FEMA through Chicago, this rigmarole, okay? It's three and a half years. We just found out two weeks ago that we were successful in that appeal. So from the 2018 event, um, we secured about $1.9 million um, in federal assistance to do repairs. The 2018 event, 2019 event, um, that was awarded mid last year, I want to say, and that award was about 8.2 million, um, and that's for dishes all over the county. Um, so that money was secured. We physically have received 25% of that, and then the rest we will request on a reimbursement basis as we complete repairs. So yes, we have right about 10 million between those two events. Because I wonder, the reason I'm asking is, I'm wondering if some of the the problems like on Dish 52 weren't caused during those years where the bank, uh, well, they didn't allow the, the drainage on 52 was uh, uh, restricted in certain areas, I think, where over the years of the side bank was eroded. In we did do some FEMA repairs on 52 uh, two years ago. We pulled up some, some banks and some spots where it was broken. Do we have more to do on 52? Um, I don't think I have any more FEMA work to do on 52. It's, it's tough. So with FEMA, for every single site, every single slough that's in the dish, we need to have documentation to them that prior to that event, it was a slough pit. And that right after that, during that event, it sloughed them. Okay? So there's some things that have been there over time and maybe triggered it, but sometimes it can be very difficult to get the feds to pay for that if we can't prove that that disaster cause that damage. Any other question? We will be around later if you have some information on your parcel. Like I said, we, uh, we make a book of all the parcels in the, in the system. Oh, well, two questions, actually. Is Ditch 52 one of the longer ditches? Or is it just the standard? Um, it's not that big a ditch. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot bigger ones, but they're too small. Yep. Yeah. It's in the middle of the pack. It's a it's 540 yeah. miles of ditch in the county. So. Okay. And the next thing is, is where does the ditch end? Does it end at the Minnesota? Crow Creek. Crow Creek. Crow Creek. Crow Creek. Crow Creek. Okay. And right on. Right. Uh, right there. The Hill Street down. Huh? Don't pass oh, that. Uh, Past Brokaw. Is it just past Brokaw? Another half mile? Kind of a wooded area, I, I know that much. Yeah. Do you know where the creek or the ditch comes through behind the school? Yeah. It goes under the under one, then right by Brokaw there. It'd be just within eyesight, but down there. So Kibble implement is is yeah. it's just uh, southeast of Kibble implement. Yet another one? Okay. The, um, so as I said, we'll, we'll be around here if you have inform, or information for us, you'd like to see what we did on your property, how we came up with that. Uh, we have a book here where we have every parcel outlined and uh, all those factors listed in there, um, how we came up with your benefits. Um, other than that, I appreciate everybody coming out. And uh, 
If you have questions, our phone, you should have uh, our phone numbers, uh, email, and the address if you need to send us tile maps or have any general questions.